based on what we would need when we go there. I hope ESA will go there and I hope it goes there in my career time, but ESA won't go there alone. Unlike the Europeans, Russian space engineers have years of manned space flight behind them. They've had great success with long duration orbiters like Mir and the International Space Station. Now, they're applying the same technology to a vehicle that will carry cosmonauts on the next step of the journey to the Red Planet. We can say with confidence that we have a prototype of a spacecraft for a manned flight to Mars. Right now, that prototype sits under construction scaffolding. Energia's Leonid Gorshkov will convert this space station module into the new Mars ship that will carry up to six cosmonauts. It will be called MEK, the Mars Expeditionary Complex. Gorshkov is confident about his MEK module, its proven technology, orbiting Earth right now. Zvezda is the service module for the International Space Station, housing propulsion, communications, and life support systems. MEK is reviving an old dream. Russia actually started planning for an assault on Mars more than 40 years ago. Back in the 60s when that project started, I was very young and I had a junior role in its development. Sergei Korolev, a star of Soviet rocketry, ran the top secret project. Korolev is gone, but his accomplishments are honored. His technology is still studied. The work on the Mars project under Korolev began on June 23, 1960. Working under Korolev's direction, Vladimir Bugrov was a senior member of the design team. The designers went back to Von Braun's Mars mission model of multiple Earth launches and orbital assembly. These calculations and drawings are all that's left from four years of work. Forty years before NASA even floated the idea of artificial gravity, the Russians knew it was necessary for Mars. Their crew vehicle would rotate on its axis, creating Earth-like gravity for the crew. Another design breakthrough was an onboard greenhouse for growing fresh vegetables. In 1964, the Kremlin shifted focus to the moon race, and plans for a Mars spacecraft disappeared. But the legacy of Korolev's technology lives on. It can be seen in Mir and the International Space Station, and now in a new Russian manned vehicle for Mars. Gorshkov is not reinventing, he's adapting. He's expanding this module to six meters in diameter and close to 30 meters in length. And the Russians have decided to play it safe, at least on their first manned trip to Mars. There will be no landing. Cosmonauts will stay safely in orbit above the red planet. But from the engineering perspective, you've saved yourself a lot of work. The most technically demanding part, you could certainly argue, in any mission to Mars by humans is going from Mars orbit down to the ground and back again. If you elect not to incorporate that step, then you save yourself a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money. Russia's caution with landing on Mars is well-founded. In 40 years of sending up unmanned Martian probes and satellites, Russia's record is 16 failures and only two successes. You know we've had very bad luck with Mars. With the Moon and Venus, everything went well. But it seems that Mars never wants to surrender. The United States is also exercising caution. By returning to the Moon before attempting Mars, NASA will work out the kinks of a manned space exploration program that hasn't seen action in more than 30 years. No one wants to fail the first time out in a manned mission to Mars. There's no forgiveness in space. You get it wrong, you kill people, brave explorers, and sometimes they don't give you a second chance. The distance between Earth and Mars is slowly closing. People are dedicating their careers to the cause of a manned mission. 
From desert testing grounds in Nevada to a NASA rocket test bunker in Cleveland, Ohio, the right propulsion system will emerge. In Moscow, an aerospace giant will manage the huge cost of Mars by converting proven space station technology for the hundreds of millions of kilometers to the Red Planet. The engineering challenges of Mars are enormous. Will the technology hurdle best be cleared by nations joining together? I don't think it's in the budget or even in the wishes of any nation to go alone. This is a big cooperation. This is for humanity to go there. Sure, it would be nice to see Russians on Mars, but I'm strongly convinced that no matter who will develop the complex, the crew will be international. global economies, linkages in many new ways. I believe the way to go to Mars is to go together. Mars One, you are go for staging. Inboard cutoff. We confirm inboard cutoff. You're going to see every single spacefaring nation of this planet contribute. You're going to see Chinese architecture there. You're going to see Japanese know-how. You're going to see Canadian activity on board principally a Russian-American vehicle, but nonetheless, Russia and the United States cannot get to Mars by themselves. It will have to be a joint undertaking. Initiate auto-docking sequence. When the multinational crew reaches low Earth orbit, they will get ready to dock with a spacecraft that will carry them to Mars. <laughs> In the odyssey of Mars, the weakest link may be human. The breaking point of hardware can be measured, but what about the mental and physical limits of the crew? As the longest, most dangerous voyage of discovery gets underway, the human factor is the great unknown.